I hope you enjoyed this uh, square pixelating, very roughly pixelating the picture. And uh, we're going to even fine tune it more today. Because when we do that, we get more into the subtleties of each color. There's more brightness in it. It's less all the same because when you choose the common denominator, you, you really flatten everything out a little bit. So the finer you go, the more you fine-tune your color skills. And eventually, it's just one brush stroke. I think it's great to have just the squares to focus on. And we're going to continue also in the next lesson to do that now with the reds. So after fine-tuning this, we're not going to do that anymore, so don't worry. I know this is tedious, but then we're going to look at all the color subtleties of the reds, and we take other photographs. So you can also look for photographs that have an average red or an average green, more green than this, or an average purple, but that is what we're going to study for the next weeks or so. Uh, let's go look at the demonstration and then um, if, if you have any questions please let me know. I think you're doing great, all of you. It's, it is such an, a, a discovery to, to see the results of this study and how we're going to blend it in pretty soon with your drawing skills is going to be even more exciting. Uh, let's go look at the demonstration. So here's the picture again to uh, really know that there's bright blues in there. We're going to pixelate it even further. So we divide all the squares, which is one inch, into a half inch. And that will give you a good idea if you're right on or not. With the end result, if you squint or you put the picture very far away, you will see that they should be exactly the same. And if they're not, you have to adjust something, which you can do because you know exactly where to put less or more dark light, blue, yellow, whatever it is that you need. These exercises are to really fine tune your vision of color, your sensitivity about color. Most people are intimidated by it. They don't see the color. They, they probably analyze it or they just don't see it. These are exercises to train your sensitivity. Um, I'm not going, this is not going to be a long video, but I want to show you a little bit how I mixed the colors with that little palette that you see, because, but it's very hard to show you exactly how much or um, what exactly I put in to reach a certain color. So here's the yellow chart again. There's not that much blue in it, and I was aware of that, and also not that much purple. But we're going to look at them now more precisely and work our way with a tiny square that we also had to cut out and then go from there. So here I'm trying to find this color that's in the corner. Um, I know it has a little bit of red in it, because the leaves are actually also up front. As you maybe have noticed is that I cut out the whole picture to fit the same grid. So now there's no distraction from, from the sides anymore. And um, we have exactly the same size, the same, I think it's six by eight, which Obviously, I use a lot. This takes actually a long time to, to get everything right. I, 
I go over it later because the colors stay fluent very long and uh, you can adjust quite a bit. I'm going to also fast forward the video again, but you get the idea and um, it's a great weekend to, to do the exercises. Don't only look at the color, but also how dark or how light is it. When you have the end result from a distance or looking through your eyelashes, this should exactly uh, be the same picture. So let's have a look. Once in a while I am getting lost and I have to count where exactly I am. Um, but you can count. It's, it's helpful, actually. I made this picture from a park very close to Amsterdam when a couple of days before I left. There was fog, and, and you can see this too when we have fog. Uh, the, last week there was a lot of smoke in the area of where I live and with the smoke you also see it. It's less blue but it fades away in the distance. It creates a lot of depth and the fog is watery so the water creates that blue far in the distance. And remember that forever, that even if there's no fog, the distance far away is much bluer than anything up front. And when you become a master of this, you can add blue to everything that's far away, even though you don't see it. That is going to be part of your mastery. You cannot exaggerate it because people will say, um, I don't believe it. It has to be believable. It is not about the blue. It is about creating depth through adding blue and white. That is how we all perceive the world. Mountains in the distance are blue. Trees in the distance are blue. And that is what we see. So if you do that in a painting, uh, it immediately creates that illusion of depth. So now where I'm almost done, let's see how it looks like. But first I want to show you one more picture of the fog in Amsterdam a couple of days before. See how the blue and the white and a little bit of yellow create that. Here's the end result. When you squint or you walk away from the picture, you see exactly the same thing. I see where I can make some adjustments, but um, this is what it is. Do it for yourself. Mount your picture, pixelated picture far away, and then you will get the idea.